I'm Stephen Bauman. I would like to invite you on a special journey. A journey of exploration in a magical place. A place of mystery, adventure, intrigue, and where art and history collide. A place where the old masters found their inspiration and enlightenment. And that enlightenment they shared with the world forever. This September, experience the thrill of adventure in my plein air painting workshop in Tuscany. Together we will capture Florence's sublime effects of light and witness forever for yourself the beauty that is Tuscany. this extraordinary opportunity to paint in Italy can be found on my website at www.stephenbauman.com. Me about Italy. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh my God. This was the first time that we actually went to Italy where I was in control. And I said, this is the only way I'm going to go from now on. But it, it, it's different when you're invited to be a guest artist and they have this agenda. And so, like, you know, you show up and they say, okay, well, we'll start painting at nine o'clock and then at 12 we'll have a four hour lunch. And then maybe you'll have a talk, and then you have a five-hour dinner. Oh, five-hour dinner. I mean, it's just crazy, you know? And then, and so everybody who signed up last year was kind of involved in all that. So this year, I went back. Um, we were able to cut $1,000 off the budget for everybody. You know, so it was $1,000 cheaper. And we kind of cut out the meals. We kind of did the meals as we flew through the different cities. We got up at 5 in the morning every, every day, started painting at 6. We would paint until 10 or 11 o'clock at night. We did five paintings a day. Oh my God. Four nocturnes, four night paintings where we were actually in the city. And so it was extraordinary. And we started adding on different cities. So this year we went to Siena, which was really an eye-opening thing. And then next, next year we're planning on doing the aqueducts outside of Pisa. So we'll probably drive into Pisa and take a look at that. But um, kind of the, the best part of the entire weekend was when we went to this monastery on the top of the hill. And everybody asks, what was that? It's kind of a converted town monastery, and it's way in the hills. And you in Tuscany has been one of these places where rolling hills and wineries and, and you know, these big chalet villas. But when you get into the high mountains of Tuscany, which I didn't know they had such places, you get into really thick, forested areas, and they're different than the United States beautiful waterfalls and all this beautiful stuff. And all the villas are chalets. So they have these beautiful villas, but they all look like three chalets up in, up in there. So it's a totally different area. And we found, it, found this little city on the top of this hill. You've got roads, it looks like Disneyland, where the roads go underneath buildings and everything is curved and all these little village huts and beautiful stone buildings that have been there since the 1500s. Incredible, incredible architecture, and everything is pristine. I mean, even the rose bushes are trimmed, so that they're just perfect, 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 and then a beautiful rose at the front. And if the rose was blocking something, they would have, you know, just very slightly just altered it so it would grow just a little different. Everything, there's not two windows, not two stairways, not two things that are alike, not two uh, everything in this one little place has been thought out. Think How so. many people were with you? We were 10 artists. Ten. 10 artists. Three of the students were 
totally green. They're not even part of my coaching students and the rest of the people I coach, but they're worldwide. And it's really awesome to get all these artists that I coach worldwide into one spot. And the village is great, and the, the hospitality is bad. So, how was my trip? Fabulous. I'm, I'm coaching this morning, and one of my students says, I'd like to start showing my work. And I go, okay. And she goes, well, how do I get a gallery? And I said, well, you know, that's a whole conversation in itself. But, you know, what I was trying to tell her is that you don't physically have to have the gallery. She didn't quite understand because basically all you really need is four walls. You just need some place to put your artwork and then you need to market it. And she was kind of like, well, I'm not very good at marketing. I'm not, you know, and none of us are. You know, I enjoy marketing a lot. That's kind of my thing. It's like, you know, if I'm going to have an art show, how can I market it? How can I get it out to people? Um, and so a lot of my coaching, I work with people in the marketing. And I told her, well, you know, the best way to, to go ahead and, and get started, and I know a lot of artists in the Bay Area have got started off with this, is that they find independent coffee houses. You know, not Starbucks, but other ones that are independently owned. And a lot of times they'll let you have your walls for a month. You can start showing your work. And it, that seems like a pretty dead-end thing if you just leave it at that, because you'll only have the people that come in and buy coffee. But usually you can talk to the owners and say, why don't we create an event, an opening, try to create some movement, try to get some ad in, in the newspaper. And believe me, they're interested in having you promote their coffee place. And then once, you're, once you kind of establish a, a date and a time, you start putting together an invitation, a private showing, a, try to generate some kind of event that brings people to that spot. Because a gallery show, or a coffee house, or any place. I mean, some people have had really successful shows in real estate offices. And so that might be something that, you might know somebody that has a really good location on a main street that has real estate. The thing is, their walls are usually kind of empty. You could talk them into, hey, cleaning this place up a little bit, let's have some people over. Um, restaurants are good, but again, restaurants are not as good as coffee houses. Because restaurants usually at, at dinner time want to have you know seats or take money out of their pocket, but usually coffee houses are really great. They're interested in that. So all you need is four walls, and then you have to start doing the marketing. And I've talked about some in my other videos about marketing. But I was driving out of my driveway today to come down here to, to coach you guys, and I get this this mail. This is a guy that I coach, and I'm not going to tell you. I swore to him that I'm, I'm going to keep him secret because he's like, he's a really good painter, but he doesn't want to have anybody know he's taking coaching. So it's only the truth. So I'll try that. So anyway, he sends me some stuff. And, you know, these are the things that, you know, I work with people to try to market themselves. Because, you know, if you act like a king, the office will come. You can really not be a really great artist, but if you market People will take you seriously. So, you know, I get this. And, you know, this is just one of his brochures. And I'll pass this around, you can take a look at it. But he's one of my one of my coaching students. And these are brochures that you would see in really high-end galleries. And these galleries used to do these kind of things for their for their clients. Yeah, you know, now galleries don't do anything like these. So these are probably done through Vistaprint. As you can see in here, it's almost like, I mean, if you were going to buy a painting, and the artist would hand you, you know, a brochure like this, and it had all of these beautiful images all lined up with some history, you know, some of your bios and some, some, you know, pictures of your cat, and uh, I don't know, maybe your husband sleeping or something, and these, all of a sudden you go, wow, I mean, because when you look at this, you'll go, wow, this guy must be really big and popular because he's got a book. Right? But the thing is, you can get these things printed now. It's really quite extraordinary. So I'm going to pass these around so you can just don't say his name out loud. Okay. And then this all kind of started because he also produced, here's a brochure. See, and he does this all himself. He doesn't wait for a gallery to do this. But here's a, here's a brochure of his work. So. 
and I'll pass this around and stuff. And the thing is, you see, it's really high quality paper. I mean, if you look at this stuff, you go, wow, this guy must be really an amazing artist. And he's a really good artist, too. But the thing is, all this marketing stuff is stuff that you do. And um, so he produced a calendar also. And he takes this calendar. And I said, well, who are you printing this for? And he says, well, my local bank. You know, so when you get, uh, when you open up an account, sometimes they'll give you a calendar. Or at the beginning of the year, they'll have calendars. But he doesn't wait for them to ask him to print a calendar. What he does is he prints his paintings on calendars for next year, and then goes down to the bank. And you have to have a really good, he lives in a good neighborhood. Um, and then you go down to the bank and say, here, give this out to your clients. And so they love it because it doesn't cost him anything, and he gets really great PR. And so if you look at here, there's no names of any of the banks, or even the real estate offices, or any company. But if you want to do guerrilla marketing, if you want to get yourself out. So, you know, you do something like this if you live in a neighborhood like Carmel or Santa Barbara, someplace where you know that the clients that go to that bank, what's really a, a good um, place to do this is up in Bend. Because Bend has per capita more money in bank accounts there than like anywhere on the West Coast. Yeah, a Bend of all places. But uh, a lot of money from Southern California has gone up there. So if, if the bank was handing out calendars to their clients, their high-end clients, um, good way to get your name out. So you can take a look at that. So was it your, um, well, let's talk to Ursula real quick here. Um, so you've been consistently every week painting. Yes. And have you kind of, because it's, you haven't had a lot of talk, you've been kind of painting, haven't got a lot of coaching, you're just painting, painting, painting. What is the experience that you're having with your painting? Uh, I was just uh, very... Uh, I was uh, surprised that I'm coming as far as I'm coming in painting because um, it's new to me and I'm just listening to what you are saying about painting and painters and uh, listening to your videos a lot and actually I do hope that someday I'm going to wake up and have it all yeah. <laughs> and every day I'm coming to another revelation like pay attention to light and shadow uh, uh, warm and cool colors mm -hmm. texture mm -hmm. uh, paint what you see yeah. Do you find just painting every week, like just on a subject like this, is it getting easier and easier for you? It's easier, and I have my paintings lined up with the level of uh, difficulty, and sometimes I look at them and they puzzle me. And I might just take the one that I'm thinking was the most difficult, and I'm ready to finish. Mm -hmm. You know, because that knowledge is clicking in somehow without me knowing how it's being put together. Yeah. With how we see yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I, I noticed that all the girls that are working in here pretty much are working independently and just kind of, every year, here's another still life, here's another still life. And it's that consistency. And I noticed like today, I mean, all of you guys were rock stars today. It was a relatively simple subject matter that. It wasn't too difficult to kind of wrap your head around. But I was like going, oh my God. It's like, wow. Even Mary. <laughs> Poor Mary. We love Mary. Yeah. But even Mary's work was getting, you know, she's pretty consistently nice. So I was just like, just really impressed. Are those brochures something? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking they got in them. Yeah, I was too. Yeah, I was thinking to make a study those. Yeah, well, it's not just the counter, even the brochures. I mean, if I didn't, if you didn't know better, you would look at these and you'd go, well, this must be like a big artist in, you know, San Francisco that, you know, these are brochures. But this is just self-marketing, mm -hmm. you know. And, and he's like, oh, when we get together, we start marketing. It's like, we just like our kindred spirits. It's like, yeah, what about this? You know, the thing is, you can tell thousands of people to do something like that. And then you think, oh, well, now everybody knows it. Nobody will actually make the effort to do it. 
One out of every 10,000 people will actually do that. And people go, oh, there's so much competition out there. There's, yeah, how can I ever make it as an artist? I'm not good enough and all this stuff. It's actually, you can make it if you put forth some effort. I mean, Gladys, how many shows have you done this year? Two. Two? Yeah? Yeah. Two. And that's so, not even... Solo shows, yeah. Solo yeah, shows. Solo shows. Solo yeah. shows. Yeah. And you've only been painting a couple of years. Two you years. know, And a lot of people, two years and two shows. A lot of people, they have never had a solo show and they've been painting for 10 or 15. But, you know, you get out there and you do it. If, if you get out and you tell people about yourself and, and push it, people will actually recognize it. And so it's just having the confidence to do that. I have a gal in uh, Sydney, Australia, that she's starting to really start coming out of the closet. And it works starting, but it's like, she, when she first started coaching with me, she was scared to death. And I would go, just, you're so talented. And she'd go, oh, you know, I can't, I won't. And slowly but surely, she's starting to get out. And people, you know, so she just got, um, Accepted into a major gallery in Sydney, which was just huge, huge for her. Um, and all she needed was the confidence to put a couple of her photos in a brochure like this. Because if you walk into a gallery with a brochure like that and say, I want to talk to you about having my paintings in your gallery, and you come up with a thing like that, they'll sit and listen to you. If you show up with one of those little cheap, plastic you know, holders that hold those little five by seven prints and you're flipping through it. Or if you go, oh, I want to be in your gallery, let me show you my pen. And when, when people come into my classes and they pull out their phone and they start doing this, I'm going, oh no, 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 get me away from you. I don't want, I'm not interested in looking at your, your phone. You know, but if you will drop in and you drop a, a brochure down and you say, here, this is who I am, and it's that professional, They'll sit and talk with you immediately. They won't say, oh, come back. They won't, because they don't know who you are. But if you're marketing like that, they're interested. Because most galleries don't know how to market artists anymore. And if they show that all they have to do is put up your paintings and you've got marketing material available, they're interested. You're an easy sell for them. A lot of people, they go, they go oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do a co-op because I don't want to have to donate two days a week. Well, the thing is, those two days a week, you can learn how to market people. Because people come in, and, and you know, every once in a while when they come into this gallery, I'll like, do a little Tom Hopper. But you get to meet the clients. Yeah. And so you get to be there in, in a place that costs you $50 a, a, a month. But the problem is, is that those two days that you're there is the best day for you. Because you get to meet people, you get to sell your work. What happens the following day when you're not there? That person is selling their work. They're more interested in selling your work. So co-ops are one of those things that, you know, and most people don't know how to sell paintings anyway. So like you have a co-op and you end up with some volunteers and they sit there and they watch television on their, on their uh, uh, phone and they'll go, if you have any questions, I'm right here. You know, and people will walk in and walk out. And so co-ops are great because you can get your work up on the wall, you can have one woman shows, so you can do stuff. But most people don't take advantage of them. They think, oh, I'm going to put my paintings in here, sit for two days. And they become the person sitting there doing nothing. But if you have a co-op, you start doing brochures, you start doing marketing. You know, let people know. Take more days there. Be there. Teach the people in the co-op how to sell your work. It's like, to, to talk to them, because a lot of them don't know anything about making a sale. You know, so it's, it's, it's okay, but, you know, and galleries are not the end thing anymore. Galleries are not the thing that, galleries are great and they're a good place to meet people, but right now online, a lot of artists are starting to really learn how to market online. The two days you're yeah. there, you're selling your work, but the rest of the time, they're selling their work, so you yeah. sit there kind of blind. Yeah. But I can tell you, if you do any marketing online, if you send somebody interested in your work a, a packet like this, a media packet with that stuff in it, I was like, man, I was going to buy one of his paintings. After just seeing it, you think, wow, this is nice. And it's just self-promoting. You have to become a self-promoter. Yeah. My husband says, if we don't invest in me, who would? Exactly. Yeah. I said, so nobody, if, if that you don't look like you're... Every picture I do, every canvas. It's just like with, with framing your work, with you know putting stuff up on YouTube, get what you're doing. Your, if you're not going to invest in you, nobody else nobody is going else. to. 
Yeah. You see a lot of paintings on the wall. Why would you buy them nowadays? You don't need to buy a painting. You gotta create the, the hype. And part of the hype is having cards and brochures. And when you go out and meet people, you introduce yourself. You don't have a little business card, you have a big card. In Italy, I was like, even my students all had cards to give out to people as they ran into people. And there's these big cards. It's like, now they have to put it in their suitcase. They'll remember me. Yeah, one more time, at least before they throw the card away. They're like, oh, what am I going to do with this big card? And then I sign the card. And they go, oh my God, this is a signed painting. <laughs> it's worth something. I can't throw this away now, right? See, psychological. You know, so anyway, um, make sure I get those things back. Now, the thing is, what I really am noticing with the people that are painting in, in the gallery over there, Every week, just kind of consistently painting from life, painting from life, painting from life. You know, originally you guys weren't so good. And every week that you've been working on it, you're getting better and better and better at it. Um, this was a still life where I had everybody kind of get over it. It's kind of hard to come up with unique things all the time. The problem with this is that's a big plate of things. There's no central focal point. You know, so what's missing in this? That. So that's the central focal point. And that could be anywhere you choose. You could move it over there. See, but when all of a sudden you point to something in a painting, it's more interesting if you look at the whole thing. And we'll make the central focal point even smaller. Painting takes on a much more interesting effects. So shadows are your friend when it comes to painting. And see, that becomes more interesting than just looking at it flat. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the painting just looks. I'm moving right along. Who's is this? Grisel. Grisel. Same thing here. It's like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice, but you have weight. Let's do it. You know, like a window coming in. See how much nicer that is to take half the painting? Yeah. You know? So lighting effects. We don't paint things, we paint effects. And so you need to kind of get more effects into your painting. When you sit it up in the room, I have trouble because of all the surrounding stuff. Yeah. And I, I usually try to pinpoint it down. And the thing is, what I try to teach you guys is like, you know, how do you get a central focal point of light? But today I was trying to decide before continuing. Yeah, you decide it or choose it first. You have to choose it, you don't decide it. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to try to get through as many of these as we can. So it's not that I don't love you. It's just that there's no time for everything. Okay, so who's this? Dottie. Dottie. Um, very nice, one of your nicer pieces. But again, and part of this is working from life. You know, it's like it's lacking. Just you got to remember when you're painting these, you got to get that shadow in there, and then the area of light that you're painting. You know? And the thing is, we can leave the light just like that. Let's try to look at it this in reverse. Okay. So here we have almost the same kind of painting. Yes. And then look at it as it comes. See how flat that gets? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So having some kind of effect, some lighting effect. Here, this is beautifully painted. And I, you know, just it's gorgeous. That reflection and everything is like spot on. I just need to get more. You okay. just need that little tadam in here. You know, that just that little thing that says yeah. this is this is it. Then also these brush strokes in here. What I would have done is I would have just taken my finger and brushed them, broke those up a little bit more too. Good, nice. Who is this? That's my turn. That's pretty. Yeah. It has that nice glass effect. 
Um, and I think there's a seat. Yeah, you see how that just changes everything? Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's it's all about the lighting. And what happens is that you see this happening and then you go, oh, I want to do it again. <laughs> yes. Let me just jump to my knees <laughs> and just start painting. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to paint here but this afternoon. Yeah. Um, but you just got to kind of keep in mind that your paintings have to be that way. So whose is this? Gladys. Gladys. Here again too, Gladys. This is beautiful lighting and the rain. The storytelling is fabulous and your paintings are just like, you know, crazily good. Okay, but here again too, you know, if you bring the room, you know, bring the uh, more atmosphere towards the front of it. Now the room act, the outside feels even more drabby and, and you know, kind of bleak. Um, to see the hearts in the hearts. Yeah, I love the hearts in there. You text me that. So really quite beautiful. One thing you want to make sure, see all these little lines in here that are following the petals? You want to try to do them in, some, in different ways. If you find yourself going over the same thing over and over and over again, it's, it's too repetitive. So who's this? First one. Okay. Oops. Very complex, a lot of subjects, a lot of things. Uh -huh. But again, you know, you want to take the things away and concentrate on lighting effect. And just changing the light, you can see now the light's actually on something that's not even a thing anymore. Yeah, and that's when it really becomes good, is when you get your light off of the thing. Here again, too. Who's this? First one. Yeah. Beautiful. I think your painting today was just like, you really yeah. are getting that. I'm trying to get it. Yeah. But see, that's plain. And it's all about lighting. It's yeah. all about taking your lights. In fact, this is so beautiful here. But you can see how beautiful the lighting effect is. And just by bringing, changing the wall, half dark, half light, Creates a little bit more drama mm -hmm. This is like a car of audience. If you like to try coaching for yourself, whether you're a beginner or an advanced painter, please don't hesitate to give me a call at 415-606-9074. Join us on our website at www.thegrandview.org and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting.